Hi, my name is Jason Matthew from We Can Edutech, and today I'm going to quickly show you how to create flashcards in Articulate Rise 360. So let's get straight into it, guys. We will do this in four steps. First, we will discuss what flashcards are and why it works. Then we will look at different examples of flashcards, followed by looking at how we can create those flashcards in RISE. And finally, we will discuss best practices in creating flashcards. So what are flashcards and why it works? Well, let's go into our Biochem 101 course in RISE 360. So I click on Biochem 101. And then I scroll down and I go to the flashcard lessons and I click edit content. So as you can see in this lesson, I've already created some flashcards for us to look at. So let's look at the first one. So mitochondria generates and there's a space there in the cell. It means that you have to figure out what should be in that space to, to complete the sentence. So mitochondria generates. And if I click to flip, you see it says ATP. So flashcards are click and reveal interactions. So why does flashcards work? When a learner uses flashcards, there are two things happening. First is active recall. Active recall is the ability to remember a concept from scratch without assistance or prompting. This deepens the cognitive pathways to that information. So you're improving your memory much faster than you would with passive recall. So the second thing happening there is metacognition. So after you flip over the flashcard to see the answer, what's the first thing you do? You compare that answer to the one you had in your head. This is called metacognition. And it is a very effective way of ingraining memories because it forces you to reflect on your thought processes and amend them so they are much more accurate. So let's look at some examples of flashcards that I built into RISE. So we've already seen the first one where you have a space there and you, you have to complete the sentence by filling in whatever is missing in that space and then you could flip the card to see if you got it right. You could also use flashcards for learning translation. So like for instance, hola and what's the English translation for that is hello. So flashcards are really good at learning vocabulary. So the learner looks at the word. He then thinks of a definition that is right. And then when he's finished with his definition in his mind, he could flip the card to see if he's correct. Flashcards are also good for antonyms and synonyms and so on. And so you could flip there. It's good for, it's really good in biology when you're looking at definition of processes and stuff. So like for instance, in this one, if you read that true, it should be definition of photosynthesis. Now, one thing to note, you see that you would have noticed that these two flashcards here for extrovert and photosynthesis is much larger than the ones above here. And that's because there are three flashcards. They are normally on RISE 360, they give you a default of three flashcards. So the ones above, but if you were to delete one and just have two flashcards, they automatically increase in size in that space. So that's something to remember. Now, another good use of flashcards is when you are trying to remember mnemonics. So like a classic one is Roy G. Biv. And if you flip, you can see what Roy G. Biv is. Now, this is a, this is a good example of some best practices here. So as you can see, it first tells you about the colors of the visible light, and then it talks about the wavelengths and so there, there are basically two points there and your the learner has to scroll down to get all of it it's not there as soon as he flips it over so one of the things that you might want to consider for proper technique is just to have one point associated with the card so if you look here i have roy g biv and i've taken these two points and separated them so you have these two new cards where you have Roy G. Biv, and this one just talks about the colors. If I flip it, it talks about what colors each letter of Roy G. Biv represents. 
And then I have another flashcard that talks about wavelengths. And if you flip that one, it just talks about wavelengths. So you have one point per card, and that's really good best practice for when you're creating your flashcards. Now, if we scroll down a bit, we see a different kind of flashcard here. In this one, we are using images. And if I flip, what is this image here? And if you've been following the tutorials, hopefully you remember that this is an image of a mitochondria. Now, these flashcards are a little different. To go to the second flashcard, I have to actually use this arrow here and click on it for to go to the next flashcard. So these flashcards are stacked on top of each other. So if we watch above, we see that the, the flashcards are side by side here, like in a grid. Similarly, these on top here as well. But this one is stacked. So each flashcard is stacked on one another. So the first flashcard was a mitochondria flashcard. As you can see in this stack, if we watch a number, there's a total of three flashcards that are stacked on top of each other. And right now we are looking at the first flashcard. Now, if you use the arrow, we go to the second flashcard and you see there's a image there. Um, that's the image of me. And if you click on it, it says Jason Matthew founder of We Can Edutech. So another use of flashcards could be not for learning academic stuff, but it's also a great way to learn about the people in the organization. So this is something that you might want to use to just introduce staff and stuff. So it could be like that. So when you click on it, it says it gives the information of the person. So that is a neat way of getting to know staff, getting to know like who the instructor is for the course, the TA and stuff. That could be an, a nice way to do that. And you can use the arrow here to go through the different cards on the stack. So I'm going to scroll back to the top and I'm going to click the preview button so that we can see how it looks, how the flashcard looks on different devices. So this is how the learner is going to see this different flashcard. So this is how it looks on a desktop computer. Let's see how it looks on a tablet such as an iPad. So this is how it looks. So it's a great responsive design. The person just clicks on them and they can see what it looks like. And they scroll down and it has the same kind of experience as if you were using a desktop. Let's go back up. Let's use mobile device now, mobile phone. So this is how it's going to look on your phone. So again, great responsive design. There are all the, there are all the flashcards there. They just rearrange now one on top of each other like this so that they can fit properly on the screen and maximize the, um, the screen. So you can see for the stack, you just do the same kind of thing. You click the arrows to go back and forth in the stack. With the others, you just click, you see there, and so on. So the flashcards work on all kinds of devices. You get the same kind of experience where you click and you see what's at the back of the flashcard. It's a great stuff. So now that you have seen different examples of how to use flashcards, let's go and create our own flashcards now. Now there are two ways in which we can get to flashcards and how to create them. So first, make sure you're in edit mode. So I'm gonna click on the edit button here. And now if you watch, anywhere I see a plus, I can add flashcards. So anywhere that I see this, this quick insert here icon, this plus sign here. If I click on it and then I go to interactive, and I scroll down, you can see there's the choice where if you want to use a flashcard grid, where there the flashcards are side by side, or you want to use a flashcard stack where the flashcards are stacked on top of each other. So that's one way in which you can insert flashcards. Or if you want to add the flashcards at the bottom of everything that you have done so far, you scroll to the, to the bottom and then you use the quick toolbar and you choose flashcards. So by default, RISE gives you three flashcards. So then you go to the top left there next to the first flashcard and you click on edit. And when you click on edit, you're going to be able to edit the three flashcards. So there's card one, and if you scroll down, there's card two, and then there's card three to edit. So let's start with card one. Now, 
there are three options with every flashcard that you that you have you could either add text you could either do a centered image or you could do a full card image and that can be done on either side of the card so let's start off with simple let's go with text and then if you look at the next line it says front of card one that's the placeholder text that rise has added to the front facing part of your card so you can highlight the text now, once i've highlighted the text you see the formatting toolbar comes up so it means that whatever i put there can format as well so let's go with roy gbiv that mnemonic that i was given in the example okay and if i want to get that um to format the text i want to get that toolbar back up i just highlight the text again And the toolbar comes up so let's say i wanted to format that and i also wanted to change the color i can do that and i'm going to choose blue and i'm also going to put in brackets there it's colors that i'm talking about now on the back of the card i can again either decide if it's text image or an image in this case i'm going to stick the text and the back of the card i'm going to put the colors so I highlight the text and I can put red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and so on. So you know, you know the thing. I'm just going to leave two colors alone. So let's click in the general space and let's see how that looks. So you see we format it to be in bold and in blue. So that's there. And if you flip on the other side, we see the start of it, which is red and orange. I did not include the others, but you can see that's how it looks. So we have finished the first flashcard. We can do a second one. Okay, so to go to the second card to edit, again, we just go to the top left here where it has the edit button. We click on edit. Okay, so for card two, let's try an image. So I click on that and I'm going to go with a centered image. If you go to the main space, you see already that Rise360 has added an image for you. But what you can do is that you can change that image. So let's change that image. We click on the edit and we're going to replace image. Now you can replay, if you choose replace image, the first option, it will, you can choose an image from your computer hard drive to replace there. Or you can replace one from the content library. So for today's um, example, I'm going to replace one from using the content library that RISE provides. There's also where you can crop the image and you can also add an alt tag for the image. So let's click on replace from content library. And in this one, I'm just going to be very simple. I'm going to look at an apple and let's see what they have for apples. All right, I'm going to make it simple. I'm going to choose this one and then it will upload and replace the image there. For the, the back of it, it's asking, well, right now it's, it's on full card image, but I'm going to put text and I'm going to put, I'm going to highlight the back of card two as the, the placeholder text. And I'm just going to put Apple. And now we are finished. And this is the kind of thing that you would do. Um, you would change the, te you could choose between text, centered image or full card image. Choose an image either from your hard drive or from the stock images that the content library will provide. And you repeat that process and you can then create all the different flashcards that I have created in the examples that I've shown above. So there's one more thing I want to show you with text. So if you choose text, for instance, and you come here and you click on this and you highlight the information here, and you, let's say you put um, some words here. So let's put um, the, I'll just put the. And I click on the enter return key on my keyboard. I know I'm now in a new row. And you could click on the quick insert icon there, that plus there. And then you can add a table or you could add an ordered list or you could even add an unordered list. So these are some, some options here that you can add on your flashcard as well. So let's just add a table. 
And as you can see, you can type in, in the table here. And you can you can edit the table as you go. And then you can even highlight you can highlight the words you had on top bolded. So that could have been the title there. So I'm just gonna put the table example. And of course, what you could you could then decide what you're gonna put for the back of the card. Now there are other things you can do. Now let's say we have already added three flashcards and you can click on the add button to add even more so now there's a fourth flashcard and then you could click add to add more so let's say there's there's five flashcards there now let's see what we have created so far so i go to the space here and there are the five flashcards that we have added so roy g biv that's the first one we did then we added a picture uh, with an apple if you click on the back there's apple and then there was a table that we kind of quickly created and then these these are the other two cards if we wanted to go with those two cards now if for instance you don't want it like a grid and you want them stacked on top of each other that's a very easy fix you go to the left again and you click on the drop down arrow here where it says next to flashcard grid and you can then go to flashcard stack and what I will do is stack all the the five flashcards on top of each other so as you can see now there's one of five and you can use the arrows to go through each one of the different flashcards and finally let's go back to edit let's say that it's only the two flashcards that I wanted you can easily delete any flashcard that you don't want by going to the right and looking for the trash can for that flashcard and then once you click on the trash can so now we have four flashcards i'm going to remove the the other two so there we go so now we just have two flashcards there and if i go to the main space let's see there's one of two so there you go so you just click on the trash can to remove the flashcards all right, so let's look at some flashcard tips. So one of them that we already come across is keep it simple. One point per flashcard. And if you see that you're, you have to scroll, that means you're adding too much to that flashcard, you might want to consider breaking up those points into separate flashcards. The next thing you want to consider is the pictorial superiority effect. And, and that basically explains that our brains find it easier to recognize and recall visual inputs. Pictures are easier to remember than words. John Medina discovered in his research that after three days, someone is likely to remember around 10% of the information they read. But if an image is added to the text, this figure increases to about 65% of the information being remembered. Some topics are better suited for flashcards than others. Topics where you need to learn a lot of small pieces of information like vocabulary or historical dates are often the best to use flashcards for. You don't want to overload your flashcards with too much information. And again, I just want to go back to the first point. If you find yourself trying to fit too much on one side of a flashcard, then that's a sign that you might want to try a different approach or at least try chunking the information into multiple flashcards. So please visit our Weekend Edutech channel to view our other videos on Rise360 and other educational technologies. Please support us by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for viewing. Stay safe. Talk to you.